My name is John Mad Dog Hall. I'm the executive director of Linux International. I've been programming since 1969 and using mostly Unix systems uh, since about 1980. I worked for Digital Equipment Corporation uh, in their Unix group. I did programming, systems administration, I taught at the university level, things like that. And I met Linus Torvalds in May of 1994, saw Linux for the first time and saw a commercial value for Linux and free software that a lot of people didn't see. Linux is a free operating system, and we say the word free, we're actually talking about the word freedom, okay? The ability to change the operating system to meet your needs. Right now, there are about 430,000 different software packages, which are free software that work on top of the Linux operating system. So people are, uh, of the 500 fastest computers in the world, 98% of them run Linux. And about 60% of this world's servers are now running Linux. And of course it runs on things like the Asbury Pi, which was designed at the University of Cambridge for educational purposes. Well, Campus Party is a lot of fun. You go, you get together with people who are typically between 18 and 32 in age, but I mean, there's some gray beards there too, and uh, but t typically younger people. And they're all excited, they're all geeks, they're all interested in technology, heavily interested in technology. They want to know how things work. And they have different expertises coming together. Um, it's not just about computers, but it's also about multimedia. And so you have people who make videos and audio and, and songs and stuff like that. You have people who have bright ideas and they're very good technically, but they don't know how to bring these ideas to market. So Campus Party helps with entrepreneurial types of things. And this year, I think they have a thing called the, the Marketplace, which is going to allow people to come with these good ideas to come and see if they can get the funding and the interest to take these a step further. Um, Working with these people and seeing what they're doing and being able to talk with them and share ideas is to me one of the most exciting things that could ever be. And if you are somehow in technology and you're not excited by this, then you must be dead. Well, you're in the wrong field. It's that simple. So I invite people to come to Campus Party and interact with these people, you know, sit down with them, roll up your sleeves. I'm gonna be there for the entire week. I'm not just coming in to give a talk and I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna be there from the time this thing opens up to the time the lights turn out. I come from a very strange country, okay? It's called the United States. And a lot of people think that the United States somehow was the creation of computing. And there was a lot of computing done in the early days. I mean, the Mark I, the Mark II done at Harvard, and you know, the ENIAC done at the University of Pennsylvania. But not many people know about the history of computing as it happened in Europe and the UK. And I happen to be a great fan of Alan Turing, who is considered to be the father of computer science, and in 1935 wrote one of the original papers which talked about how computing could be and how computers could store the programs in the memory and how computers could actually use those numbers that they computed to actually control themselves. And this was a breakthrough. This was something that, as simple as it sounds today, because we're used to it, this was amazing to people back then. And he did this with pure thought, on paper. He never even built a computer until much later. Uh, he also came up with the idea of a, a measurement of artificial intelligence that we use today, of, of how, do you, how do you determine whether something is artificially intelligent or not. Now later on, during the war, he helped with uh, decoding German messages at a place called Bletchley Park right outside of London. And he actually took programs or problems and broke them down to what we would call today parallel programming. And this allowed them to break 
the German Enigma codes fast enough so they could actually intercede with what the Germans were planning. And it was, it was Alan Turing who did this. And in the end, they ended up building the first electronic digital computer called the Colossus. And, you know, that's, this, they built it out of telephone parts, you know, relays and valves from, from the local telephone company. And after the war, Churchill insisted that all of these machines be destroyed and all the plans be destroyed and nobody talk about what had happened at Bletchley Park. So in 1969, when I was studying computer science, I learned that the ENIAC at the University of Pennsylvania was the first electronic digital computer. I never heard about Alan Turing. I never heard about the Colossus. And then in 1970, all of this was declassified and people wrote books about it. And it was amazing to me that of the 30,000 people that worked at Bletchley Park, nobody talked about it for 25 years. Even people that were married to each other, that both of them who worked at Bletchley Park, never talked about it because that was something you just didn't do. So I want the people of Great Britain to know about this. I want to know what the efforts were. And uh, I want them to know that the first program, the first computer to store a program was called the EDSAC and it was developed at the University of Cambridge. I want them to know that a man named Maurice Wilkes was the head of that project and I was lucky enough to know Professor Wilkes. I want them to know that one of the first programmers was a woman named uh, Rear Admiral Grace Murray Hopper and she developed COBOL. I want people to know that Charles Babbage in 1860 invented something called the Babbage Difference Engine here in England. And that a few years ago, the Science Museum here in London actually built one of those machines and it actually worked. I mean, Charles Babbage was never able to build this machine. It was simply too expensive for the time. But now they were able to build it and it worked from his plans. I want them to know that the person who is credited with being the first programmer of all the programmers was a person by the name of Countess Lovelace, which you may have known by Ada Lovelace. And she wrote programs that would work in Babbage's engine. And I want people to know that I'm looking for the next hour in touring of computer science. And I am not so egotistical to think they're going to come from Silicon Valley or Seattle, Washington. They might come from England. They might come from China or India, or even as unlikely a place as Helsinki, Finland. But I do know that with free software and with things like Campus Party, I may find that person and I'm going to skim them off the top of computer science the same way that you skim cream off of coffee or off milk, I'm sorry. I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs>